you know, the choice you always hear is live now or save for later. And I, I don't know, maybe you can do a little bit of both. Okay, so today I wanted to make a few quick points about getting ahead and being happy. So, of course, we're going to start with metals. I think precious metals are a fantastic way to save. You know that I personally like gold, so we're going to start there. Now, gold is an appreciating tier one asset that's off the grid, it acts in some ways as a hedge against certain economic failures. It is safe. It's also physically impressive. It has a way of holding your attention away from other shiny things that don't really buy happiness and ultimately are a waste of money. But we're going to come back to that. Now you can substitute silver for gold if that's the metal you prefer or substitute some mix of silver and gold, platinum, whatever. But regardless of the metals that you like, what they all lack is yields and compound growth. So you aren't truly going to get ahead if you're just buying metals. Now I'm not saying that to be down on precious metals and it shouldn't even need to be said, except there are channels telling you to rush out and buy silver because today is your last chance. Maybe it was yesterday, I forget, whatever. Next month, there will be another day that's your last chance <laughs> because silver is going to explode. So don't listen to those people. They are driven by ad revenue, and they know that the more they exaggerate, the more they get paid. Now, if you truly want to get ahead and be happy, you can do three things. You can save, you can invest consistently, and you can avoid lifestyle escalation. Now, those three things alone are not going to make you happy, but they will help you expand your wealth and reduce your financial stress. I've said this before, I'll say it again, gold and other precious metals are a great way to save. I'm going to give a few reasons here in a minute. So we're going to look at investing. Investing in equities gives you a bit more flexibility to pick your risk tolerance, to find high-performing stocks, to find dividend stocks, and that allows you to take advantage of compound interest and compound growth. And then in the case of tax-advantaged accounts, it lets you do some of this pre-tax. And depending on your employment situation, you can even take advantage of a corporate match. I'm sure we've all seen the chart of gold beating the S&P 500 from 2000 to 2020. But that chart is incredibly misleading. And the people who show it either don't know or don't care. Now, gold was at an extreme low, and the S&P 500 was at an extreme high in January of 2000. Now, I'm old enough to say that I was there. So that chart just simply tells you something that is not true. Investing consistently does not mean buying silver because some guy on YouTube continually tells you it's going to the moon this coming Thursday. Silver and gold are a lot more like savings. They just happen to have some extra potential. Now, the reason I bring up diversification is simply that if you're younger than I am, and I'm, I'll just say I'm older than 39, investing in the market consistently gives you options that you don't have with gold or silver. And this is why I rarely think of metals as an investment. Again, I think of them more as a savings. Now, the third thing I mentioned is living below your means. And this is very much the hardest strategy for me personally. If you're a typical human, you're going to run into lifestyle escalation or lifestyle inflation, whatever you want to call it. Basically, your expectations rise as you make more money. You make more, you want more. And if we want to get into psychology again for a minute, there's an idea called the hedonic adaptation or being on the hedonic treadmill. And it covers the idea that you have a baseline of happiness. And as you get more money or things, the quick spike in happiness wears off. And that goes for your lifestyle in general, meaning you never really feel like you're getting ahead. And it also goes for one-off purchases you make, like that new car you just bought or that fancy watch. Excitement wears off, and then you want something new again. And these three things work together because if you can't find a way to live below your means, then you can't save and you can't invest. And if you want to get ahead or just be comfortable at retirement age, you need to do those things. So if we just look at some math for a minute, if you want to save $1 million by the time you're 65, we'll just use round numbers, and it's very common, you can find this just by Googling it. If you start investing in your 20s, that's going to give you 40 years to save. Now, I'm using the word save and invest interchangeably here for a minute, but however your mix works, we're going to assume a 10% rate of return. I'm just using common numbers. I've personally had a higher return than that. 
It also just kind of makes the math easy. Now, if you start when you're 25, you need to invest $179 a month to get to a million dollars at retirement age of 65. If you start 10 years later at 35, then you need to save $481 a month. At 45, it's 1,382, and at 55, it's 4,964 dollars that you need to save every month to get to one million dollars by retirement age of 65. And again, when I say save, we're assuming a 10% rate of return, so I actually mean invest, unless you expect to see a 10% rate of return on whatever savings model you're into. So that's a fair amount of math and psychology to get to my point. Buying metals has a lot of advantages. First of all, they work as a standard savings model. And second, because of their shiny physical nature, they don't sting when the excitement of buying that new thing wears off. It's less of a treadmill when the things you buy actually accumulate and even appreciate in value, even if you're constantly out shopping for the next new coin. Now the point of caution here though is that if you look at metals as your consistent investment, you might not get that 10% rate of return that you get with equities. So diversifying is going to help you get ahead while others are constantly waiting for next Thursday to send their metal holdings to the moon. My point is simply to do both. Find something with a higher rate of return, think of that as your investment, and then buy metals as a savings account, a safety net, maybe a way to see moderate gains and then don't get overextended. I finally got some purchases on their way. I was able to get another half ounce American Gold Eagle again, and that should be here soon. But the premiums locally have actually increased again. They're at 12% now for a one ounce Gold Eagle or Buffalo. I'm seeing 55% premium on American Silver Eagles. So I'm being careful with those purchases. It is hard to hope for a 10% rate of return if you're starting out with a 12 to 55% deficit. So I'm trying to be smart. I think that covers it for today. I'll have some new gold to show again soon. So let me know how things are going for you. Are you finding any deals? Or are you having the same luck I am? Let me know. Hope you're all doing well though. I always appreciate you watching. Take care.